Zoax.net. Lesson 18, Video. In this lesson, we are going to discuss the video element. This is the standard for playing video files in HTML. There are other methods for playing video, most of which are old and unnecessary now. I only mention them so that you will understand if you see them in code samples elsewhere. Let's look at our first example. Like the audio and image elements, the primary attribute is the SRC or source attribute. This designates the video file that will be played. Like the audio element, we have a controls attribute that is used to allow the user to control the playback. Opening the document, we see our video player with the basic controls on it. The controls on the video player are similar to the audio player. There is a play button that can be used to pause the video once it is playing. There is a seek control to set the playback point. There is also a volume and mute control. In addition to these, the video player provides a control to make the video full screen and a control which allows for other options. By default, the other options only include setting the playback to picture and a picture. If you click this, it will just open up a little player window in the bottom right corner of your screen. We can give a little demonstration of these controls. This is a video capture of a game that I programmed in ActionScript, where you fly a paper airplane through rings and control it with your mouse. Like the audio element, the video element has attributes for autoplay, loop, and muted. Including autoplay makes the video automatically start playing. Loop makes the video play over and over. And muted mutes the sound. Opening this document, we see this. Generally, I would not recommend automatically playing a video, unless you have a very good reason. Otherwise, it is somewhat rude to your visitors. In addition to these attributes, the video element has width and height attributes to control the size of the player. Note that the relative sizes of the width and height, or the aspect ratio, remains the same for any size. So the video uses the largest size and fits the video within the specification. The rest is filled with blank space, as we see when we open this document. Generally, we do not want to have a bunch of white space around our video like this, but the important aspect of the sizing is that the video will fit inside the specified dimensions, and that is important for designing page layout. As we saw with the audio element, we can remove the source attribute and include a source element instead, like this. We can even include multiple source elements for different file formats, so that if the first one is not supported, the second one, or even the third one, will play. This is typically not a problem now, since the basic file formats, MP4, OGG, and WebM, are nearly universally supported in all major browsers. In our last example, we have the preload attribute that can be set to auto, metadata, or none. To preload the entire video, just the metadata, or nothing at all. This is strictly an optimization for playback. Additionally, we can have track elements inside our video element. These can designate files for subtitles or metadata for the video file, and we will not cover these in this video.